Hey guys, uh, today we're doing something a little bit different. Uh, we are going to be discussing some monsters from 5th edition, uh, going through some of the different aspects about them, who they are, where they like to live, you know, some of their past, different types, all these cool things for the D&D &D monsters. Um, I got like some lists, I got a little bit of stuff wrote out. Uh, we're not going to do it all on camera, I'm going to just talk a little bit about what we're doing right now, um, who we're talking about. And then I'm going to throw up some pictures and talk over them in a very surreal way. Um, we are going to start with monsters from Volo's Guide to Monster. Um, I was going to start with the monster manual, but I didn't realize I don't own it. So I need to buy it before I feel okay with uh, using the material from it. Uh, secondly, uh, it starts with a good monster to start off on. Uh, one that I really enjoy and would be excited to use as a DM in my campaign. Um, we are going to start off on page seven, seven, with good old floating eyeball dude, Beholders. So we're going to get into that and we're going to talk about some Beholders. So to get in here, what is a Beholder? Well, as you may physically, in a physical description, uh, Beholders are the round floaty guys. Uh, they have the one big center eyeball and 10 other uh, eye stalks uh, that have other eyes on them. And that's the only real defining features. Um, boulder beholders are made uh, out of their own minds and whatever they imagine has a tendency to become real. So beholders can take on varying shapes. Uh, they can be hairy, scare, uh, scaly, they can have plates, uh, hide, thick skin, uh, translucent skin, all different colors. It's literally up to their imagination what they will look like. Uh, so the only real defining features of a true beholder are is the center eye, uh, which this center eye uh, is one of its most powerful weapons. Uh, while you're in the gaze of this eye for a typical beholder, all magic becomes null and void. Uh, the magical shield that you're using to protect yourself doesn't work. Uh, that boots of swiftness that you are used to run away with, not going to work. Uh, so, extremely powerful. Uh, the other smaller eyes uh, are what they use to use its like eye stalk-esque beams. It could charm you, it can disintegrate you, fear, telekinesis, and many other ones. I was going to see if there's a good list. I don't think there... Oh, here we go. Uh, charm, paralysis, fear, slowing, death ray, telekinesis, sleep ray, petrification, and disintegration. Those are what it looks like to be the main ones. Um, so beholders, while they may be incredibly powerful, are very solitary and very paranoid. Uh, beholders will live by themselves. Uh, they might enslave some weaker creatures to put under its wrath but it will not hang out with another beholder. It will not be friends, but we will get to more about that in a second. Um, so it's very paranoid. Uh, it thinks it is perfect in every way, its shape. It is the best beholder, and no one will be any better than him. Uh, as such, though, he's paranoid. The beholder always thinks someone's going to kill him. It's always afraid of its own death. Uh, and as such, everything... The, the home it lives in, it's afraid it's going to collapse in on him, so he's going to put up more pillars. Uh, he's afraid dude man three rows in the front, two to the left, uh, is going to stab him in the eye one day while he's sleeping. So you know what? He's executed. Uh, he's afraid that global warming is going to increase the temperature of his lair too much, so he's going to have a heat stroke, fall down a flight of stairs, and die. As such, he is actually recycled and is very good to the environment. Uh, these are all like inevitable thoughts the beholder may have because he is incredibly smart and will think of everything that could ki like possibly be against him and end his life. Uh, as such, he is extremely paranoid, uh, which I think is very funny for a creature who has like an unlimited, like a limitless imagination to create and conceive. Um, speaking of that, so a beholder, since he has such a big brain and ha does all his time thinking alone in his lair, um, he does also does a lot of sleeping. Uh, beholders are known to sleep a bunch. As such, when a beholder sleeps, he dreams. And his dreams, if he's thinking, you know, about another beholder for some reason, you know, 
either in a romantic or furtive way, uh, that can create another beholder just out of his imagination. Uh, and then those beholders will fight to the death because that's what they should do. Um, other things, I'm going to flip over here in my Vol's Guide because I know there are some other types of beholders. If not, I will... Oh, they're not in here. So, so other types of beholders that we're going... I'm going to have to look up really quick. So there's a bunch of different types of them. Uh, some of them are not true beholders because true beholders are one with the ten stocks, one eye. These are what you would call like subclasses of beholders. They're things that either were formed with the bodies of beholders or by the beholder thinking too hard about one subject. So he, so this thing becomes, you know, into existence. Uh, first, we're going to start with the blood kiss beholder. Uh, so they are still the floaty head boys. Uh, they have one eye in the center and all their stalks are now more like tentacles with uh, small mouths and claws on the end. Um, they are formed when someone tries to raise a beholder from the dead uh, so it creates what's called a blood kiss beholder it's like a vampiric undead beholder that will come and try to drain victims of their blood uh, they're very creepy and not very nice the death kiss uh, same kind of idea if a beholder while he's sleeping or in his free time for some reason has an obsession with blood and starts thinking about blood for whatever reason they might be thinking about it um, it can make a blood kiss, which is like a white and red skin beholder, uh, one center eye. Uh, it loses all the other eye stalks and replacing of tentacles, uh, similar to the last one we just talked about. So they're, they're pretty similar. Um, this one uh, has an obsession with blood. Um, so he had on the end of his tentacles as well are the little mouths and little teeth. Uh, he will latch on and suck the blood out of creatures. So he, that's what it, this beholder does. I mean, that, that's it. His, he has an obsession with blood. He, I, his mortality, less important. Next, we are going to talk about the Eye of Flame and the Eye of Frost. Uh, they are like direct opposites of each other. Uh, same ideas, uh, but, you know, different abilities. Uh, Eye of Flame is as it sounds. It's a beholder whose power, instead of having... All the different kinds of eye rays, uh, it has eye rays of flame. Uh, and its central eye is used to make people vulnerable to the fire and to catching fire. Um, so it's pretty much just a fire obsessed beholder. Um, if a beholder is thinking of arson one day, uh, this might spawn. Uh, as such, the same thing with the eye of frost. Uh, lives in colder climates, uh, has frost rays for its eyes. And its central eye is used uh, to allow ice and frost and like ice particles to stick to surfaces better and is known to like freeze creatures as they stand and make like silhouetted statues of the frozen creatures. So those are those two. Pretty much like a fire and ice version of a beholder. Let's see. Next we're going to talk about... I have a bunch of tabs pulled open. Not that one. Ah, yes. Uh, the gazer. So the gazer is like... A very, like, if a, if a beholder had maybe like a brain fart, like couldn't remember something, and this this thing would kind of come up. It's like a misformed, four-tentacled beholder. Um, they're not very intelligent, um, and they're kind of like an aggressive pet for a beholder, but they will also find them kind of amusing and will let them follow them around and be familiars and serve them uh, because, you know, it's an unintelligent version of itself. So they're not very smart, not very intelligent, but they're pretty much a flying beholder brain fart. Uh, in similar, if a beholder is thinking about gold and money and magic items, uh, a goth could be spawned. Um, there's other ways that a goth can be spawned, and we will get to it when we talk about the spectator. But a goth is a beholder that will use I guess it's charisma and it's power of manipulation to lie to somehow get itself a hoard of treasure it's known as a lesser beholder um, because the goth will feed on magic items it will literally just eat them so a lot of times it will try to um, like trick maybe an adventurer 
who's trying to summon a spectator to guard his treasure. Say he's a spectator. Uh, when the adventurer leaves, he will just eat all, eat all his treasure uh, and then go about his way. Uh, they are a little different. It's a central eye with a bunch of little eyes around it. And then instead of ten tentacles, I mean ten eye stalks, uh, they have four tentacles and six stalks. So they're also like a, a terrible pinky orange color. Uh, as also, we were talking about the spectators. Spectators are a created type of beholder. Uh, ritual is done using four beholder eye stalks to summon a spectator. Uh, they are used to guard treasure and are actually pretty nice uh, to talking to people, but will not let any like will not let people go after the treasure. Uh, so pretty much, they are a beholder guard dog that a wizard could use to guard his stuff. As such, though, if a wizard fails at creating a spectator, that's when they can accidentally create a goth, which will eat their treasure. Uh, a spectator will guard treasure for, I think, like 101 years um, and before I think it can do whatever it wants. No. It's like a, a beholder guard dog, which is actually pretty cool because, you know, beholders are pretty powerful. Um, let's see. What else? I have the Deep is a water dwelling relative of the beholder. Uh, it has two eye socks, actually has like two crab-like pinchers, a terrible looking mouth, and the big central eye. Uh, it's pretty much the water-dwelling cousin of the beholder. One of the abilities of the Eye of the Deep is uh, both eyes will work together to craft illusions to create three-dimensional images. Um, so they will use these illusions to lure in people uh, from sinking ships and... What do they do with them? Generate bright lights to stun them and blind people before it'll attack them. That's actually pretty sinister. Like, luring people in with like an illusion of a mermaid, then throwing a stun grade, uh, pretty much putting a stun grade grenade in their face uh, and then eating them. Pretty mean. Pretty mean if I do say so myself. All right, we're down to like the big four, four beholders. Uh, we're going to start with a death tyrant. So if a beholder spends its day thinking about death and really obsesses on it, um, it can do like a metamorphosis and become a death tyrant, which is similar to a beholder, except all its, pretty much all its skin falls off. His eyes become like small little red marble eyes that float around him, and then one in the center just stays in the center as it will. Um... It loses like some of the power it had from its eye rays. However, it gains the ability that anything it kills, any single creature that it kills, will become a zombie under its will. Now, a, a, a really powerful wizard can control, you know, a hundred zombies. Pretty intense. An army of a hundred uh, death tyrants have no limit. They ha they expend no energy to keep zombies or undead under their control. Um, if they're ki if something is killed by the death tyrant, it has to, has to, has to, uh, be, serve under him as undead. So, death tyrants, their big thing is that they can have an endless army of uh, zombies under their control. So, that's pretty cool. Um, they are very powerful and will kill you. Uh, another thing is that the eye of a death tyrant, uh, makes healing magic not work so it's part of that like necromantic ability uh, to summon zombies comes with the ability to allow people not to heal so they're pretty dang powerful uh, we're going to talk about the elder orb it's a very old and very powerful beholder uh, it's kind of like a leader beholder leader beholder in a way um, high levels of magic and magic resistance it's believed that elder or brains can be used to make great spells that control other beholders and bend them to her, their will. Um, even uh, able to control death tyrants with their magic. So, pretty much just a super powerful beholder. And I think the last one we're going to talk about is the overseer. Um, which does not look very much like a beholder. It looks like there's another creature that looks very similar to like this it's like if you took a squ like a squid uh 
dyed it black and the top half of it, you replaced with like a tentacle tree and added four mouths around the base, that's what an overseer is. They can control beholders. Up to five to 10 standard beholders or five to 20 beholder kin. I actually found someone's stat block that they were like approximating to uh, this overseer. I was going to talk about some of the stuff they said about it. Um, they say it's a challenge level 21, uh, 270 health, 40 foot speed, it has a forest walk, which is interesting because I would assume something like this would be in a cave. Magical resistance, regeneration, pretty normal stuff. It also has eye rays, and I thought some of these were very interesting rays compared to what the actual beholder itself has. Uh, lightning beam, crushing despair, domination, dispel, paralysis, creation, uh, polar ray, death ray, turn spell, stunning, telekinesis, and temporal stasis. These are all like homebrew esque different uh, eye rays, but some of the stuff like dominating someone is very good. Um, and that fits really well with what this thing does. Um, Death Ray and Dispel Magic, pretty good. It cast everything at 8th level, it looks like. So it's pretty strong as just a creature. Manning Stream and Drain Vitality. So it's pretty much speculated to be the, the stronger. It's way stronger than Beholder. And the fact that it can control other ones under its will makes it incredibly powerful. So that's a lot on the typing, different ones, and all that kind of stuff. Um, where beholders live is what I was going to talk about next. Um, they have they create their own different, how would you say it, layers uh, as they would be. A lot of what they do is they'll use their disintegration to carve out the tunnels uh, to the exact size of the beholder to make large enemies have harder times passing through. They will create it in very annoying ways like... Uh, steep slopes because they can float it doesn't really bother them uh, and falling drops just to make it more difficult to navigate through its tunnels so as such here are some of the different rooms you might find in a beholder's lair uh, central gallery which will fill with objects that it likes escape tunnels that's part of the paranoia talking it'll so it has ways to leave its lair in the case of problems uh, it says eyes in the sky, which I think are described as secret passageways in its lair, uh, to get sneak attacks on different people and to watch its minions. So a little bit of that paranoia coming out. Uh, minions chambers, pretty normal. Prison, sanctum, uh, sanctum is his private chamber. Traps, which covered pits, trap doors. Ceiling traps, gas boards, optical course, oil spray. Trophy gallery. And that is about it. But guys, that's some on the Beholder. Uh, I didn't go too much depth in the lore. I, my idea was for these to be more of a, you know, you're searching for a specific monster maybe for your campaign and just want enough information to know the different types and, you know, just like if this is kind of what you're looking for. I uh, hope these guys helped. If you guys would like a little bit more in detail about these different creatures, uh, please drop a comment and I will see what I can do. I can spend maybe a little more time researching uh, most of the research I did was based on uh, using the Forgotten Realms, Forgotten Realms website, and uh, the Volos guide. So I had I haven't really delved into you know three e or two e or you know the different other you know more in depth books from the different uh, iterations of Dungeons and Dragons. But I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.